Greetings to you, dear students. I am Rish Justin This module is designed to equip students the basic skills required for decision making when presented with ethical dilemmas in the workplace and understand the basis of employees' actions towards a specific situation. In addition, this also provides students on how to become an effective employee by being aware of the typical work ethics needed in an organization. Specifically, we are to identify ethical and unethical practices, um, associate ethical and unethical practices to one's practices, and reflect on specific ethical issue. So welcome to module two of Professional Development and Applied Ethics titled Ethics All the Way. So this would be a little bit different because I'm going to deliver my discussion to you while you listen and interact with me by um, answering these questions. So all questions asked by moi will be answered while you are watching this video and it shall be submitted in person during our face-to-face, -face during our next face-to-face -face classes. So have you ever asked yourself these questions? Like, do you consider yourself ethical? Do you have a strong work ethic? And how do you say so? Are you too unethical for the organization you work with? So those are the first series of questions that you have to answer for yourself. So for this chapter, we will start with the definition and importance of ethics and work ethics. Secondly, ethical principles and forms and basic work ethics in the workplace for a stronger work ethic will be discussed. Okay. So as you can see on the slide, we have some um, phrases that you could see. Ethics is said to be a system of moral principles system integrated in a person's mind because of his or her moral um, principles that may come from his own philosophy or influenced by others' philosophy, probably religion, culture, etc. right? So it is the question you intrapersonally ask yourself, is this right or wrong? How do you know when something is right or wrong? So before you make any decisions. So that's the uh, second question that I'm going to lay out to you. The definition of ethics is so broad that sometimes it is unethical to define or to give one for me. So let's proceed with work ethic. It is said to be a belief in the moral benefit of work to enhance character or one's character. It is measured by hard work and diligence, according to um, the, the guru that I had used as a reference. But my question for you right now is, is it all that is, right? So um, as for work ethic, basically we have um, different work ethics, however, and wherever we are, whoever we work with for, uh, there will be certain work ethics which will be preferred. As they say, work smarter, not harder. Individual difference. But this does not excuse in delivering quality outputs for the organization. Let's say, you know, you're working in an organization. So, of course, you have to um, comply with the quality of standards that they are asking. So the following slides will discuss ethical theories used as a basis for making decisions. So um, the ethical theories which will be presented include the ontology, uh, utilitarianism, rights, and virtue. First one is ethical theory, the ontology. I'm going to read the definition. Uh, it states that people should adhere to their obligations and duties when engaged in decision-making when ethics are in play. 
This means that a person will follow his or her obligations to another individual or society because upholding one's duty is what is considered ethically correct. Now, it basically states that you play by the rules. For instance, if the, if the business person, if a business person um, who must be on time to meetings is running late today, how is he or she supposed to drive? Is speeding breaking his or her duty to society to uphold the law? Or is, it the, or is the business person supposed to arrive at the meeting late, not fulfilling the duty to be on time? So that's another question for you to answer. Now, let's proceed with the second ethical theory called utilitarianism. So as I read, are based on one's ability to predict the consequences of an action to a utilitarian, the choice that yields the greatest benefit to the most people is the one that is ethically correct. There are two types of utilitarianism, that is act utilitarianism and rule utilitarianism. So for the first one, it's subscribed to the definition of utilitarianism, putting into account um, the benefit of most people, regardless of personal feelings or law. Whilst uh, the second one, the rule utilitarianism, takes into account the law and with fairness. Now for the third one, the rights established by a society are protected and given the highest priority. Rights are considered to be ethically correct and valid since a large population endorses them. Individuals may also bestow rights upon others if they have the ability and resources to do so. So for example, in America or in any other multicultural diverse nation, they could exercise their freedom of religion because that is the right or that's a right upheld in the constitution. So that's important for them. So one of the goals of the founding fathers of America was to uphold this right of freedom of religion. And last but not the least is the virtue. Um, judges a person by his or her character rather than by an action that may deviate from his or her normal behavior. <clears throat> Excuse me. It takes the person's morals, reputation, and motivation into account when rating an unusual and irregular behavior that is considered unethical. So for instance, a person, <clears throat> or let's say a student plagiarized a passage that was later detected by his or her um, faculty uh, member or instructor or professor, right? So the student who knows the person or a peer who knows the student who plagiarized will understand the person's character and will judge, you know, the friend or the student accordingly. So if the plagiarizer normally follows rules and has some, um, good standing amongst his colleagues, the, the friend would uh, probably judge his friend who plagiarized more leniently, perhaps because uh, the, you know, the one who plagiarized had the late night simply forgot to credit his or her source appropriately. So probably you know, there's just an inconsistency that's happening. So my next question for you guys is, what is your own judgment to this situation? Okay, let's proceed with the ethical principles. Ethical principles include beneficence, list harm, respect for autonomy, and justice. First up is beneficence. Guides the decision maker to do what is right and good. This principle is also related to the principle of utility, which states that we should attempt to generate the largest ratio of good over evil possible in the world. So that's actually um, a little bit, you know, has a, a little bit of a similarity between um, utilitarianism. And this also answers the question, what is right and what is good, right? So um, this stipulates to achieve the greatest amount of goodness with the majority. Now for a list harm, 
similar this is actually similar to beneficence or um, you know utilitarianism in essence why because list harm deals with the situations in which no choice appears beneficial so in such cases for example decision makers seek to choose to do the least harm possible and to do harm to the fewest people so we choose or we do things with the least number of people as compared to the beneficence where we do it with majority now, for respect for autonomy, this states that decision making should focus on allowing people to be autonomous, to be able to make decisions that apply to their lives. Thus, people should have control over their lives as much as possible because they are the only people who completely understand their chosen type of lifestyle. So I think that each individual deserves respect because only he or she has those exact life experiences and understands you know, their own emotions and motivations and physical capabilities in such an intimate manner. And last but not the least, justice. Justice states that decision makers should focus on actions that are fair to those involved. This means that ethical decisions should be consistent with the ethical theory unless extenuating circumstances that can be justified exist in the case. This also means that cases with extenuating circumstances must contain a significant and vital difference from similar cases that justify the inconsistent decision. Now, my question to you is, what are your justifications for an inconsistent decision? For you, how do you like measure justice to each person involved? Right? So you could answer that generally. So I guess that these principles and forms, these ethical principles and forms are guiding, guiding um, ideas for us when we're already working in an, you know, especially when we're working already in an organization and when we become someone who has um, more responsibilities and authorities and, you know, a, a leader in an organization. This could definitely help us in deciding what to do and how to act in a certain um, organizational situation. So it's always a case-to-case -case basis, of course, and that would be affected by someone's values of how a person values a thing or um, his moral principles, right? So it will always be, um, I believe, different to everybody else. Now, let's proceed to some basic work ethics in the workplace. Uh, the following slides are actually um, some tips and guides on how to have a better work ethic. And these are all self-explanatory, but this is a little bit difficult to inculcate to our own lives. So this slides that I'll be presenting to you guys would be a reminder that this is some work basic, um, some work ethics or ethics that we should observe in the workplace. So first and foremost, be professional about your work. And how are we gonna be professional to our work? By practicing being cordial and avoiding negativities maybe. I mean, in a certain organizations, there's what we call an informal communication, which is called grapevine. And sometimes it is essential to the organization, but sometimes it is also a little bit harmful, especially if the information that's circulating around is not factual, right? Next, be reliable in work, be um, capable, of course, and how are you going to do that? By continuing professional development. Of course, be honest and have the best outputs as you could have, especially um, accomplishing the organization's uh, standard. And last but not the least, keep everything in an organized method. Next, manage your time. This is always a struggle for almost all of us managing our time because we could be overwhelmed with a lot of things, our personal lives, our problems, our work. So by doing this or by, by, by managing our time, it is highly important that we should evaluate our work. And by this, 
we would be discovering our own uh, strengths and weaknesses. And when evaluating someone's strengths and weaknesses and, and someone's performance, you could be more effective and efficient in the next time that you have to do a certain task. Yes, of course, there are some distractions everywhere, especially nowadays that we are intertwined with the digital um, media, right? And we could easily like grab our phones, check our Facebook, our Instagram, tweet things, right? But it is also, um, we could also be mindful of these distractions by prioritizing what needs to be done and remind ourselves that this has to be done in a certain uh, deadline so that we could avoid um, procrastination, which is another problem for almost all of us because we are millennials, we are Gen Z citizens, and we tend to have like short span of attention and focus on certain things. And that's backed up by research. So we're already aware of that, but we have to be, or we have to combat that thing because that doesn't help us in being productive while we are working in an organization. Next is keep a balance and deliver consistent high performance work. And how we're going to do this is by at least, you know, get, um, be um, healthy in your own way, like have eight hours of sleep. You could do your own sports. You could do indoor and outdoor activities. You could um, eat nutritiously as well, have your diet, and then think of the things that makes you a little bit relaxed. So it's always, always different for each and every one of us, but it would always be dependent on what we think that's healthy for us and what we think that um, it is beneficial for us. And then I'm in order, I, I mean, there's also like one um, thing that we could do is to meditate to help us recharge, especially if you're feeling burnt out in an organization. Um, especially today that everything is a little bit overwhelming. It's almost like everything is fast paced. So take a, take a step back, try to relax, focus, meditate, and, you know, see what happens and evaluate um, yourself if you're too stressed and this and that. So at least you have that mindful um, mind that you're aware of the things going on with your own life and with your own professional life. Okay, next is develop, develop good work habits. And how do we do this? Actually, this is um, um, already discussed in module one, but I'll just want to, again, um, reiterate because these are basic work ethics in the workplace. So one thing that's not included in module one was the making use of technology. And this is no brainer for us because we use technology. It's impossible that we don't use technology this time of you know, this era. So um, what else? Yeah, these are some just basic values that we have to have in an organization so that we would be deemed as professional or having an attitude of a professional. So no need to do, to, so I think that's it, okay? That's all about module two. I'll be seeing you on module three, but before that, you're not going to do any of the case studies because as I was discussing this module two, you're already interacting with me and answering already the questions that I'm asking. So I'll be, reiterating the five questions to be answered in this presentation. So you can review once again the recording of for your reference. So you could um, find the questions that I have asked in slide two, slide four, slide nine, slide 12, and slide 18. So you could go back again and watch and then try to take note of the questions that I have asked during my presentation. And those are the questions that you will be answering and be submitting to me in our next face-to-face um, -face classes. I hope that you've understood uh, this presentation and my instruction regarding your task.
So anyway, if you have any questions, you could just always message me on Messenger. Okay, so these are the references that I've used. So that's it for module two.